Hello and welcome to this lecture on advanced electric drive. In the last class, we are discussing about a numerical problem on vector control of induction motor drive. We will start from that. The problem statement is as follows. A 400 volt 50 hertz 4 pole 1370 rpm star connected induction motor is supplied from a current regulated pulse switch modulated voltage source inverter and is operated with rotor flux oriented vector control. The parameters of the machines are as follows. The stator resistance is given as 2 ohms. The rotor resistance referred from the primary side is 5 ohms. The stator leakage reactants and the rotor leakage reactants are 5 ohm respectively. The magnetizing reactants of the machine is 80 ohms. All reactances are calculated at 50 hertz. The rated speed, the rated frequency of the machine is 50 hertz and hence all the reactances of the machine are given with 50 hertz frequency. The core loss and the friction loss are neglected. So, we have to neglect the core loss and the friction loss. So, what you have to find out is as follows, find the required values of I d s and I q s. This, this is I d s e and I q s e, because we are talking about a rotor flux oriented vector control. So, this I d s and I q s are in a rotating reference frame, rotating with the rotor flux vector and hence we have the superscript E here, I d s E and I q s E. In fact, this I d s E and I q s E in the steady state, these variables are DC variables. Find out the required values of I d s E and I q s E to operate the motor at rated speed, if the terminal voltage and frequency are held at the rated values. So, we have to find out I d s E and I q s E, they are the flux component of current and the torque component of current respectively. To operate the motor at rated speed, if the terminal voltage and frequency are held at the rated values. Also, the part B is calculate the torque and the slip frequency is radian per second under the condition in A. So, this is the problem statement and this is the problem of a vector controlled induction motor drive and we will see how to solve this problem. So, uh, actually if we see this particular problem, this problem talks about the steady state condition only. So, we do not have to bother about the transient condition and hence a steady state power phase equivalent circuit will be sufficient to analyze the various currents and voltages. So, uh, we know that we have very well known power phase equivalent circuit of an induction machine in steady state condition. So, this is given as follows. So, we have the stator resistance, the stator leakage reactants, the rotor leakage reactants in for the stator side, the resistance of the rotor, the magnetizing reactants and of course, the motor is star connected and hence the power phase voltage, the power phase rated voltage is 400 by root 3. Root 3 is coming to picture, because we are talking about a star connected machine and 400 volt is the line to line voltage and the power phase voltage is 400 by root 3. So, uh, and the motor is operating at rated speed, the rated speed is 1370 rpm and hence we can find out the slip of the machine is 1500 is the synchronous speed minus 1370 by 1500 and that is equal to point 0.0866 is the rated slip of the machine. And then we have to find out the current I s here and unless we find out the current I s, we cannot find out I d s and I q s. So, we know the slip of the machine, the operating slip of the machine, we know the motor parameters, we have the equivalent circuit, it is a matter of simplifying the impedance and finding out the current. So, uh, we will find out the impedance looking from this side. So, if I if I look from this side, this impedance is 
let us say it is z 1, it is a complex quantity. So, it is it is z 1. So, I will just find out what is the value of z 1. So, if we find out the value of z 1, z 1 is given as follows that is equal to this is basically the parallel combination of j 80 ohms with uh, the leakage reactance of the rotor and the resistance of the rotor by the slip. So, we have in this case j 80 into 57.7 point seven plus j 5 divided by 57.7 plus j 85. The slip resistance in this case is 57.7 ohms. So, if we divide this 5 by 0 0.0866, which is the slip of the machine, we get here 157.7 is the slip resistance in the rotor. So, this is what we have here and, and the unit here is ohms. And we can further simplify this as 80 angle 90 into 57.9 angle 4.95 degrees divided by 102.72 angle 55.83 degrees. So, this is also in ohms. So, this is the impedance z 1. We can further simplify this z 1, we can we can write this as 45.093 angle 39.12 degrees. This is the polar form, the rectangular form would be 34.98 plus j 28.45 ohms. So, this is the value of the impedance that is z 1. Now, we can we can find out the impedance seen from the source side, this is the j is rated. So, this is what we have to find out. So, in order to find out this resistance j is rated, we have to add the impedance of the stator. The stator impedance consists of the resistance of the stator R 2, that is the ohms and the leakage reactance of the stator is j 5 ohms. So, we can calculate what is z rated at the rated slip, z rated means the impedance of the machine from the source side at rated slip. So, uh, that is equal to 36.98 plus j 33.45 that is equal to 49.864 angle 42.13 degrees and the unit is ohms. So, this is basically the impedance of the machine at rated condition and if you want to find out the current, we have to divide the voltage by the impedance. So, we can we can do that. So, to find out the current which is I rated, I s rated the rated stator current that is equal to 400 by root 3 is the voltage divided by the impedance value is 49.864. So, we do not have to bother about the angle here, we are only interested in the amplitude. So, what we do here is that the power phase voltage here we can say this is V phase, V power phase is 400 by root 3 divided by 49.864 that will give us the stator current that is I s in the R m s value. So, this current is in the R m s value. So, we can we can say this is a root mean square value of the current of the stator for the rated condition and the unit here is ampere. So, that is equal to 4.63 amperes. Of course, this is a sine wave current because we are talking about the sinusoidal quantities, we are talking about the impedances. We are talking about the voltage which is a sine wave. So, this current will have a peak value that is the R m s value into root 2. So, uh, we can find out the peak value of the current 
I S peak and that is equal to I S rated into root 2. So, rated we know here 4.63 that into root 2. So, we can we can find out that that is equal to 6.549 amperes. So, this is the peak value of the stator current and if we want to find out the torque and flux components of current, they are basically in two axes. So, what we need to do is this that we have this current and the current has got two components, one is the d axis component and other is the q axis component. So, uh, this is our d axis and this is the q axis. Of course, this axis are rotating and this is rotating at a speed of omega e and this is our I s and we can have two components, one is I d s e and the other component is I q s e and this is the peak value of the current. So, we have a situation where we can apply the Pythagoras theorem and find out peak square, this is peak square is equal to I d s e square plus I q s e square. This is same as the rated I s hat is the same as the rated value of current, the peak value of the current. So, we can say here that I d s e square plus I q s e square is equal to 6.549 whole square and that is equal to 42.89 amperes. So, this is one of the very useful equation that we have. So, this, this relates I d s and I q s. Now, we have to find out the slip speed. Now, we know that slip speed is a very well known quantity or is a very important quantity in rotor flux oriented vector control and that is basically the product of the slip and the supply frequency in radian per second. So, we can we can find out what is slip speed. Slip speed here is given as s into omega e. Now, what is s? s we know it is 0 0.0866 into omega e is 2 pi into 50. 50 is 50 hertz. So, we have 2 pi f. So, so that is why we have 2 pi into 50 and that is approximately equal to 27.226 radian per second. This is one of the answer. The slip speed is 27.226 radian per second. So, uh, and we also know that slip speed in a rotor flux oriented vector control drive, it is L m by tau r into I q s e by psi d r and that is equal to if we keep the flux constant, we know that that is equal to 1 by tau r into I q s e by I d s e, because we know that psi d r is equal to L m into I d s e. So, what we have here, we can write down psi d r is equal to L m into I d s e. So, if we substitute for the rotor flux in the d axis, that is psi d r, L m and L m will get cancelled. So, we get here 1 by tau r into I q s by I d s. So, this is the slip frequency okay, or slip speed. So, uh, from this we can we can have another equation involving I d s, I q s and slip speed. Slip speed is known. Now, what is tau r? Tau r is the rotor time constant and that is equal to the rotor inductance by the rotor resistance. Now, what is the rotor inductance? The rotor inductance is the total inductance of the rotor. It is not the leakage inductance. It is basically the sum of the magnetizing inductance and the rotor leakage. So, we can express for L r and L r is equal to L m 
प्लस एल एल आर प्राइम and this we can find out because we know the reactance value so we can say that we have got lm is corresponding to xm and l lr is corresponding to x lr prime is what we can see here we have the magnetizing reactance we have the leakage reactance so we can sum this up and this reactance is are calculated at uh, 50 hertz and we can divide by 2 pi 50 to find out the inductance so we can divide this by 2 pi into 50 and rr prime is already given here rr is specified in the question so we we know what is the value of rr is 5 ohms so we we can find out rr rr is 5 ohms here so if we divide this what we get tau r as point 0541 and the unit is second so this is the value of the rotor time constant now from the rotor time constant and idac and iqac we can get another equation and the equation is as follows we can we have got one equation here this is equation number 1 and we can get the second equation by substituting the values here we know the slip speed we know tau r we know i mean the expression for ids and iqs is here so we can get the second equation so we can obtain the second equation in the following fashion 1 by 0.051 0541 is the time constant of the rotor and then we have iqac and what is idac idac is 42.89 minus iqac square under root and that's equal to the slip speed 27.226 so this is our second equation so from this equation if we simplify this equation we will get the expression for iqac or the torque component of current so uh, this basically will be a quadratic equation so we can we can simplify this so we can get it in the following fashion 6789 iqac and that's equal to 42.89 minus iqac square or we can simplify this Forty-two point eight nine minus IQS square. So we can take this IQS square to one side. We can get the value of IQS is equal to five point four one eight eight two amperes. So this is one of the answer. So we have been able to find out the value of IQS, and IQS is equal to 5.4182 amperes so we can we can evaluate the value of idac also from this we can find out what is the value of idac idac is equal to under root 42.89 minus iqac square and that is equal to we have the value of iqac and we get it as 13.532 under root and that's equal to 3.678 amperes so we have been able to find out the torque component of current and we have been also able to find out the flux component of current and the flux component of current is idac so that's equal to 3.678 amperes so uh, these two currents are known and what is next the next which has been asked in the question in part b is to find out the torque so the b part says that we have to find out the torque and what is torque the expression for the torque is given by 3 by 2 into p by 
into LM by LR into psi dr into I Q A C. That is something like the torque equation that of a DC machine, the product of flux and current. And the flux can be expressed in terms of current. Psi dr here is constant. We are talking about the steady state condition. So, psi dr is constant and we can replace this psi dr e by L m into I d A C. So, we can do that. So, what we have here is 3 by 2 into p by 2 into L m square by L r into I d A C into I q A C. So, we know the value of L m, we know the value of L r, we also know the value of I d S e and I q A C, we can find out the torque. It is a matter of simple substituting the values of various parameters and various variables to find out the torque. So, we can we can find out the torque. So, if you find out the torque here, the torque comes out to be 14.3264 Newton meter. So, this is the answer. In this case, we have been able to find out for a vector control drive, the torque component of current I q A C, the flux co component of current I d A C, the slip speed and the torque for the rated condition. So, this, uh, this shows how we can tackle the problem and if a problem is given specially for the steady state condition, it is not very difficult. And most of the numericals we, we can do in the steady state condition the steady state condition is easier to solve than the transient condition. And the transient condition can be simulated numerically using a computer. So, uh, if, if uh, you have understood the procedure of this vector control drive and the principle of rotor flux oriented vector control drive, we can simulate this vector control drive with a computer numerically. So, we can start from 0 speed, we can we can go to the rated flux and then we can apply a step change of speed to achieve the speed change, the speed response. So, the transient condition as well as the steady, the steady state condition can be simulated with a digital computer. So, uh, this finishes our discussion on vector control of induction motor drive, which is, which is one of the important control of induction motor and which is basically used in industry also, because it gives a very fast torque response. Uh, there is another uh, type of control of induction motor that is called direct torque control of induction motor. Now, the direct torque control of induction motor was uh, initially invented by ABB sometimes in early 1990s. It is basically patented by ABB. And the advantage of, of having a direct torque control is that it is easier to implement than vector control. So, if we are talking about ease of implementation, the direct torque control or in brief DTC has an upper hand. It is much easier to implement a DTC based induction motor drive compared to a vector control based induction motor drive. So, we will be discussing about the direct torque control of induction motor. is called DTC. As I have already said that this is basically a technique of control which is patented by ABB. So, this is patent of ABB, but this has been implemented by many industrial houses. Uh, before we talk about the director control of uh, induction motor, we will be discussing about what is called the space vector PWM of induction machine. This uh, technique which is called space vector 
PWM te uh, a technique or called SV PWM technique will help us understand the director control in a better way. Now, we know that we have a three phase inverter, we have a three phase voltage source inverter. So, we can show this by this uh, diagram. So, we have a voltage source inverter which looks like this. this may be feeding to the three different phases. So, we can call this to be phase A, phase B and phase C. So, this is phase A, this one is phase B and we have phase C and this I will connect it to phase A and this I will connect it to phase B, this is to phase C and of course, this is the neutral of the machine that is n, small n. And often you know that the diesel link is basically for convenience, what we can do here, we can split this into two halves. So, we can split into an upper half and split this into a lower half. So, we have a battery which is split into two parts for convenient of analysis. So, this is V d c by 2, and this is also V d c by 2, and this point is a center point. We can say this is our local ground, and this point we can call to be O, point O. So, this is what we have a three phase inverter feeding a three phase induction machine. We have a digital link having two supplies V d c by 2 and V d c by 2. Now, here if we analyze this is the phase A, I can also write A here, B here and C here. These are the six switches. So, we have switch number 1, switch 2, switch 3, switch 4, switch 5 and switch 6. And uh, we will see that when you want to operate this particular inverter, the three switches will be on at the same time. It can be 1, 2, 3, it can be 2, 3, 4 and so on, but with a condition that no two switches on the same leg should be turned on. Say for example, we cannot turn on this switch and this switch at the same time. 1 and 4 cannot be turned on at the same time, lest they should result in a short circuit. Similarly, we cannot turn on 2 1 6 at the same time, they will result in a short circuit. Similarly, we cannot turn on 5 and 6 at the same time. So, these are actually called complementary switches 1 and 4, 3 and 6 and 5 and 2 are the complementary switches, they cannot be turned on at the same time. So, we have 6 different switches and we would like to turn on any 3 of these switches, how many combinations do we have? how many legal combination, how many possible combination we have. So, we can just find it out by this particular formula that we have 6 switches, we would like to take 3 out of 6. So, it is a selection of 3 out of 6, but we have to pre uh, prevent some illegal combinations. The illegal combinations are those combinations in which 2 switches on the same leg are on. So, uh, you know that if I if I suppose I, I turn on uh, 1 and 4. So, if I, if I turn on 1 and 4, I, uh, even if I turn on 3, 2, 6 and 5, that will be an illegal combination. So, we can subtract this 3 into 4. If we turn on 2 switches on the same leg, there will be 4 illegal combinations and we have three different legs. So, for every leg there will be four illegal combinations and I have three legs, phase A leg, phase B leg and phase C leg. For every leg we have four illegal combinations and since we have three legs, the number of illegal combinations are 
3 into 4 that is 12. So, that we subtract and what we obtain here is this that 6 into 5 into 4 divided by 6 minus 12. So, so that is equal to 20 minus 12. So, we have 8 possible combinations which are legal. So, this 8 possible combination will lead to what is called 8 switchings, 8 possible switchings. And what are the switchings? We will see right now. So, what we have here is this that we have phase A and phase B and phase C. This is A, this is B and this is C. Suppose, what I do? I have a switching which is called 6 1 2. Say for example, I will close this switch, 1 is closed, 6 is closed and 2 is closed. So, this is this is one of the possible combinations. So, I can I can call this as 6 1 2. This combination can also be named as plus minus minus and this plus corresponding to phase A minus corresponding to phase B minus corresponding to phase C. When I have plus or upper switch and upper switch in the same leg is turned on, when we have minus a lower switch of the same leg is turned on. So, we just go back and see that in phase A an upper switch is turned on. So, I can say it is plus for phase A and similarly for phase B a low switch is turned on. I can say it is minus for phase B. Similarly, for phase C a low switch is, is turned on, I can say it is minus for phase C. So, the sequence is A B C. So, plus minus minus means upper switch of phase A, lower switch of phase B and lower switch of phase C. So, this is what I have shown here as plus minus minus. So, uh, this will be resulting into uh, equivalent circuit of the machine like this. So, the upper switch of phase A is connected or is turned on. So, that will be connecting phase A to the positive bus. So, this is my positive bus. Okay. And similarly, the low switch of phase B and phase C are connected. So, phase B and C are tied together and connected to the lower negative rail of the bus. So, this is V D C by 2 and V D C by 2. So, in total what, what we have here, we have a total voltage of V D C, this voltage is V D C with this positive and this negative. And we know that when we have a symmetrical machine, we can assume that the impedance of each phase is the same. So, uh, we can say that the drop in phase A across phase A will be two third V D C with this positive and this negative and drop in phase B and C will be one third V D C. Right? Similarly, here also we can have this plus and this minus and this is one third V D C. So, we have a situation where we have three windings and the three windings will have three different drops. So, if we show this voltage drop as vector, because each winding is having a special orientation phase A is having a special orientation, phase B is having a special orientation and phase C is also having a special orientation. So, when I am applying a voltage to a particular phase, I can consider that particular voltage to be a vector. So, I can show that phase A is having a vector like this and the amplitude of the vector is two third V D C and the direction is as per the phase axis with this positive and this negative. So, this is shown in the direction as, as shown here. And similarly, phase B the voltage is like this and phase C the voltage is like this. And what about the magnitude? The magnitude here is one third V D C and magnitude here is also one third V D C. So, if you find out the resultant of this three vector, the resultant of the three vector will be in this direction and the magnitude here will be V D C. We can show that. So, it is one third, two third V D C in the x axis, this is my 
एक्स एक्सिस रेडर से और अल्फा एक्सिस आईकर से जिसमें अल्फा एक्सिस सो टू थर्ड वी डी सी प्लस वन थर्ड वी डी सी इंटू कॉस ऑफ सिक्सटी डिग्री दिस एंगल इज सिक्सटी एंड वी हैव टू वेक्टर्स बी एंड सी दट्स इक्वल टू टू थर्ड वी डी सी प्लस वन थर्ड वी डी सी कॉस ऑफ सिक्सटी इज हाफ इन टू टू दट्स इक्वल टू वी डी सी सो दिस इज बेसिकली द वेक्टर वी वन सिमिलरली आई कैन ऑल्सो स्विच द स्विचिंग द स्विचिंग कैन बी फ्रॉम सिक्स वन टू टू लेट एस से आई गो टू वन टू थ्री and if it is 1 2 3 i can say here to if you just go back in this case 1 means a is plus 2 means c is minus 3 means b is plus so i can say here that 1 2 3 is same as plus plus minus so plus plus minus means phase a and phase b are connected to the positive bus and phase c is connected to the negative bus so in a similar way if you draw this various windings of the induction machine this is a neutral in this case and this is phase a this phase b and c so what we do here is that phase a and b are tied together and this connected to the supply in this case that is positive of the supply and the total in this case is vdc and here we have plus minus here also we have plus minus and here we have plus minus drop and this drop is 1/3 2/3 of vdc and this one is 1/3 vdc this is One third VDC. So in a similar fashion, we'll see that the resultant vector here will be in this direction, with the angle 60 degree with the phase alpha. So we have already seen about the vector v1 and v2. So so this we call as v2, and this is the vector which you can call as v1. So it means due to the switching of the inverter. we are able to generate some voltage vector similarly we can have the switching like 2 3 4 and 3 4 5 4 5 and 6 and so on so we have seen that we can have eight possible switchings and out of eight possible switchings the six switchings will give us six non zero vectors and this vector will be shifted by 60 degree and hence we will have six vector shifted by 60 degree and two vector will be corresponding to all upper switches on and all lower switches on so we can we can now draw the various vectors here so we can draw the vectors in the following fashion this is v1 is a vector which is corresponding to the switching plus minus minus and then we have this vector v2 which is corresponding to the switching plus plus minus and then we have v3 which is corresponding to minus plus minus and we have this vector v4 which which is as a which is corresponding to the switching minus plus plus and then we have this vector as v5 which correspond to the switching minus minus plus and then we have the vector which is v6 which correspond to the switching plus minus plus so we have six uh, non zero voltage vectors and this angle is 60 degree we can say that 
this angle here is 60 degrees. Similarly, the angle between two adjacent voltage vector is 60 degrees. Of course, we have two other vectors and the two other vectors are V 7. V 7 is a special voltage vector in which all upper switches are on. So, we can call this to be plus, plus and plus and this will correspond to a situation. If you see that suppose, we have a situation like 1 3 5, which is plus plus plus. If we take this combination, this combination will lead to the situation that we have phase A here, phase B here and phase C here and this is our neutral. So, the three phases are tied together to the positive of the DC bus. So, we can say here that this all are connected together phase A, phase B and phase C are all tied together to the positive of the DC bus and the negative is floating, the negative is not connected anywhere. So, this is the DC So, this total is V d c here and uh, the negative is floating, but this will lead to a 0 voltage vector so far as the machine is concerned. So, this phase B and phase C are sorted together. So, there is no voltage vector, there is no net voltage vector. So, we can call this to be a 0 voltage vector. The same thing happens if we have other conditions like 2, 4 and 6. So, if you have this condition like 4, 6 and 2, this will be known as minus, minus, minus. So, again phase A, phase B and phase C are tied together, but connected to the negative of the DC bus. That will also lead to a 0 voltage vector. So, we have two 0 voltage vectors and the, those two voltage vectors can be shown as V 7 as plus, plus, plus and V 0 as minus, minus and minus. So, we have 6 non-zero voltage vectors and 2 zero voltage vectors in a 3 phase voltage source inverter feeding a 3 phase machine. So, we can we can say that the tips of this voltage vector, if we, if we join this tip, this will constitute a regular hexagon. So, this is these are the voltage vectors for a VSI, two level VSI feeding a three phase machine. And what we are trying to do here, we are generating a reference voltage vector from this six voltage vector. So, for example, we want a voltage vector to rotate and the voltage vector is having an amplitude that is equal to V s. So, we have let us say a voltage vector which is V s this is my V s. I can call this to be V s star, this is what I want to generate and the V s star is a rotating voltage vector and this will be moving as a circle. The tip of this vector will make a circle in the space. So, at a given instant, this is here and this angle that is that this makes with alpha axis, I can call this axis as alpha axis and this axis which is right angle to this is beta axis. So, the angle that is mixed with alpha axis is let us say theta, I can call this to be theta. So, uh, we have to produce this voltage vector by the combination of the non-zero voltage vector and zero voltage vector. So, at, at a given instant, I can say that the voltage vector is making an angle theta with the alpha axis. And if we take a sampling time of T s, during that sampling time, the average of the voltage produced by the reference voltage vector should be same as the average of the voltage produced by the inverter. So, uh, we can equate the voltages in the alpha axis and the beta axis respectively and we can say that we have three distinct time T 1 
for which V 1 is turned on or V 1 is applied, P 2 for which V 2 is applied and T 0 for which voltage V 0 or V 7 is applied depending upon the situation. So, we have three different times T 1, T 2 and T 0 and T 1 plus T 2 plus T 0 is called a sampling time. So, we can say here the T s is a sampling time which is a small time that is equal to T 1 the time for voltage vector V 1, T 2 time for voltage vector V 2 and T 0 the time for voltage vector V 0 or V 7. So, we can equate the volt second in the alpha axis and beta axis respectively. So, if we do that, so we can say that in the alpha axis, we can say here that V 1 T 1 plus V 2 T 2 into cos of 60 degree. This angle between V 1 and V 2 is 60 degree. So, that is why we have cos of 60 degree that is equal to V s into cos theta into T s. T s is a sampling time. So, we are multiplying in this case the sampling time. So, this is one equation. So, uh, we can define this is V s star which you have here and uh, we can define V d c T 1 plus V d c T 2 into cos of 60 that is equal to V s star cos theta into T s, same is the equation 1. So, uh, we can define A, A is a ratio of V s star by V d c and this is called the amplitude ratio. So, we can simplify this equation using A. So, we can write down that T 1 plus T 2 cos of 60 that is equal to A into T s into cos theta. We have to know that although we have 6 non-zero voltage vector V 1, V 2 up to V 6, each voltage vector is having an amplitude of V d c, each one is equal having amplitude of V d c and hence we have replaced this V 1 by V d c, V 2 by V d c also. So, this V d c will be taken to the right hand side and we get an A here, A is the amplitude ratio and we define the equation number 1 as this. And similarly, in the beta axis, we can say here that T 2 a sin of 60 that is equal to A into T s into sin theta. So, this is what we have here and from this equation 2, we can directly get an expression for T 2. So, T 2 we can find out as A T s into sin theta by sin 60 degree and we can substitute for uh, T 2 in equation number 1 and find out the value of T 1. So, if we substitute this in this equation and evaluate what is T 1, we can say that T 1 is equal to A into T s into cos theta minus A T s into sin theta by sin 60 into cos 60. So, we can further simplify this, we can say here is that that is equal to A into T s, if we simplify this, we get the following equation A into T s into sin of 60 minus of theta divided by sin 60 degree. So, we have been able to evaluate T 2 and we have been able to evaluate T 1. Now, what is T 0? T 0 is T s minus T 1 minus T 2. So, this is our T 
T 2. So, we can call this equation number 3 and this is our T 1, which is given in equation number 4. So, we can find out what is T naught. T naught is given as T s minus T 1 minus T 2. So, uh, for a given sector, if the angle is theta between the alpha axis or that axis and the vector V star, we can find out the values of or the numerical values of T 1, T 2 and T 0. Similarly, this can repeat in sector 2, sector 3 and so on. So, we have 6 different sectors. We have this is one sector and similarly, we have this second sector here and third sector here and so on. So, we can similarly do the calculation in sector 2 or sector 3 and sector 4 respectively and we can evaluate the values of T 1, T 2 and T 0 and we can go for false modulation. So, in this case to have minimum number of switching, what we do in this case is that we split this 0 vector duration into two halves T 0 by 2 and T 0 by 2. So, what we do here instead of going for a single T 0, what we do here is that we switch like this V 0, V 1, V 2, V 7, this is 1 and then we start with V 7, V 2, V 1 and V 0. So, you know that we have to repeatedly have this V 1, V 2 and V 0. So, what we do here is this, we divide this into two equal halves. This is T 0 by 2 and this is T 0 by 2 and this is T 1 and this is T 2 and this whole is T s. Similarly, in the next sampling time, what we do here, we divide this into again 2 T 0 by 2 and T 0 by 2. So, we divide the 0 voltage vector duration into two halves and then this is our T 2 and this is T 1 and this will help us to minimize the number of switchings of the inverter. Say for example, we can we can justify that in the in the following way. Say in V 0, we have the switching states are minus minus minus. So, we can say that V 0 means minus minus and minus. What about V 1? If we talk about V 1, it is plus minus minus. So, we have just a change of one switching in a leg. Okay? The state of the other two legs are remaining the same, only one switch in a leg is turned off and the other switch is turned on. So, only one leg is affected. Similarly, in V 2, we have the switching state is plus plus minus. So, phase A and phase C are remaining the same, only phase B is changing from minus to plus. And here, you can see here again we have plus plus plus. So, phase A and B are remaining the same, only phase C is changing from minus to plus. And uh, in this sector, we are re retaining that. So, that is plus plus plus. So, we have no change. It is V 7 and again we have the V 7 here. And then T 2, T 2 is plus plus minus. The phase C is changing from plus to minus. Similarly, in uh, T 1, what you have here is plus minus minus. So, phase B is changing from plus to minus and then we have V 0 and the V 0 is minus minus minus. So, to have minimum number of switching, so this particular sequence is adopted to minimize the number of switchings in the inverter. So, this is how we go for what is called a space vector P w wave. The voltage in this case is represented by a space vector and we are trying to approximate the given voltage vector by taking V 1 for some time, V 2 for some time, 
and the zero vector for some time. So, in the next lecture, we will see how we can go for the director control, in which we essentially try to approximate the flux vector by the voltage vector. So, that will be topic in the next lecture.